Hello everyone. It is Stephen and Andrew from Pin in the Atlas. Look at those rugged mountain peaks. Look at the cactus. Look down at that Troya cactus. And take in the absolute desolation. That is beautiful. So what are we doing all the way out here? Well, we're in the Rawhide Mountains in Arizona, and we're in search of an old miner's cabin. Let's take a look. You can see this road we're on leads off into the distance. There's some tailings piles and a few other roads that intersect up over there. So we must be getting close. So silver was discovered here in 1874 by Jackson McCracken and chloride Jack Owen, I believe. Now this isn't the main mine, there is another mine further back, but there is a cabin somewhere here. Okay, further along the road. I'm gonna check this out. Nice cement work and some more stairs. Tall and steep. And here are more remains of the mining operation. So there was a 20 stamp mill up here. So I believe these are the foundations of it. You can see the rock wall up there. They've cut out a section of the mountain. And then the metal, I love the patina. Got some wooden fragments things that have blown down over the years, fallen down, flash floods, some bullet holes in that there. Like that, it's just, we love these things. Look at how the bolts have bent all the way over. That's incredible, oh yeah. Some more cast iron metal down there. Now this is more modern because round nails. So this is the 1900s, not the 1800s. Right. Still remarkable. All right, we've come up to the top of the hill and we have found the rock cabin. We're gonna head on in and see what's inside. Wow. Nice table. Look at the bar set up back there fireplace. It's still usable. This is another floor. There's a lot by the floorboards. Beer bottles. People come up here, have a good time. Fix it up a little bit. So they're kind of blocking off the windows. Hopefully that's to, to prevent dust and things like that. Mmm, that was one of my favorites. What's your pleasure, young man? What can I get you? A little bit of Jameson? What about a nice spa? 
lot of wine. That's the stuff right there. <laughs> what an amazing place. This is incredible. And yes, please. <laughs> and fortunately, there's not a lot of vandalism up here, which is why we're not going to give out this location. This cabin is very well known. There is a lot of information about it online, but we're not going to make it easy for you. So if you would like to come here, then uh, you're going to need to do your research. Yep, that's part of the fun. Old fashioned treasure hunt. And then when you find your treasure, it makes it that much more worth it. And They've even the got uh, plates and mixing bowls. Reading glasses, sunglasses, some newspapers. And some business cards. Underground explorers, we see those all over. Gly. Gly, abandoned in forgotten places. What else we got? I guess... Uh, oh, look at these stein there. That's cool. A lot of these rocks and tobacco tins have been found and people have placed them here, which is really nice. Yeah, keeps them safe. Although I think the rule is if anything you find out in the desert is over 50 years, you're supposed to leave it where you found it. And I mean, I agree, but I also think it's good that people have done this. I mean, look at this as an old tin can. Yeah, to save some of them. Because it's kind of like a little museum. Yeah. But like with automobiles and things like that, <laughs> I think it's best to leave it where it is. Oh, look who's been here. Hey, I know them. <laughs> and this, uh, look at this old table. There's uh, a ton of carvings on it. What is it with picnic tables? Everybody carves their name in them. It's like school desks. Yeah, it's just the <laughs> thing to do. What an amazing cabin. Yeah. Now, by all accounts, this was built for miners. Um, so they didn't actually live in the cabin. It was for the miners' entertainment, I guess. Oh, OK. Somewhere that they could chill. Hang out, mm -hmm. go to the bar. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get an up close to some of the construction here. L stone and mortar in there. Some of it looks like it might be a little bit modern. So people come out here and fix it up, which is good. We like that. And here's a broom to clean up after yourself. And have you seen the barometer on the wall? Oops. Mind the wall. Oh, yeah, watch some of the floorboards. The old barometer. Oh, that's really cool. And a little bird's nest. Yeah. And look at the put bullets in. <laughs> now you might be able to hear some voices outside. There are a few other people up here that are, are also exploring. So uh, that's who you can hear. Yeah. Great. Shall we see what else we can find? All right, back outside. And of course, we've got to film the mine entrance. It is closed up. What a view. There we go. We pulled out the flashlight to try and illuminate it a little bit more. I don't know whether or not it goes back very far or whether or not it turns. That does look like the face. Kind of does. But we will never know. No. Nope.
give you another idea of how remote we are. See, way down there, there's Tonto. So the uh, little cabin is on the other side of this mountain, which is made up of tailings piles. And look at the size of that one. And the one next to it. Massive. So we're going to continue to climb up, see if we can see more remnants. All right, so again, climbed up one more level near the top of that tailings pile. And you can see this road continues up. Then there's another road right there. Sorry. And then there in the distance, you can see again, there's a road that goes up there and continues all the way up and it zigzags up that mountain. I'll get my finger out of the way, it'll focus again. And that goes way up there. So this is the other side of the McCracken mine, which apparently they've just gone almost through the entire mountain. And then as we come across this way, the other side of the valley, the views are just stunning. It's very windy up here. Especially when I come up to the edge. Look down, there's some structures. So I'll catch up with Andrea and see what's down there. So from way up there is where we were. You can kind of see the incline down the mountain what was a road and then uh, when you come off of it it's just uh, unmaintained so it's it's lost some of its structure there but here's one part you can see the bolts just hang around all the pieces looks like there's a this looks like old. a metal um, ore chute yeah and the drill bit, have you seen yeah, the, the drill bit? Yeah, the bit back there. That's how it's all twisted. And then this piece. So the gear on the back, there's the auger bit all twisted up. Some of the working parts there. Which leads up to that. And obviously there's a bunch of pieces missing out, missing off of it now. Oh, look here. Looks like I can still see some of the, I don't know if there are hand marks. And they're putting that in or chipping it out maybe. More of the bolts, and then we'll come around to this side out of the wind a bit. And see the, the metal ring embedded here and all the bolts. This kind of looks like a like a washing machine. So you would put the ore or whatever, and would it spin round? Would there be a bit that spins round and grinds it or separates it? Possibly. I mean, I, we have seen those where they do put the metal balls and tumble it down to crush it so that they get the, uh, the minerals out that they want. And here's an inside. That's where it drains out the bottom. Very interesting. I've never seen anything like this. No, not, yeah, not standing anymore. And then, as you can see in the distance, that has got to be the remnants of the 20 stamp mill, not over by the cabin that we thought earlier. Now, apparently, um, there are 9,000 feet of tunnels and drifts in this mine, and the main 
shaft goes down 6,000 feet deep from wow. what I've read. That's incredible. Yeah, because I was pointing out earlier the way it just zigzags throughout this entire mountain. It's, uh, it's immense. It was a gigantic operation. Let's take a look at the stamp mill. Getting closer yeah. to the bottom of the mill. And as you can see, a bunch of pieces, some metal, corrugated metal, small barrels, wood, all kinds of pieces that have fallen off. We can see why the wind is crazy strong right now. More pieces down there. This little wash, another barrel Andrew is standing by. And some of these pieces. They say we don't know what everything is, so please let us know. There we go, there's another look at all the metal bits down here in this little wash. And some of these are really badly damaged. That looks like a, well, I don't know, Never mind. I won't even hazard a guess. Uh, let us know what that was. I mean, at first I thought that could have been, you know, bolted onto the bottom of the ore cart. It looked like a, a gearing. It's all, maybe it is. And just all these metal pieces everywhere. Looks like a metal trough over there. Lids to a bunch of the barrels, some smashed barrels. And now looking up at the mill. What you got? Well, I don't know. It's really, really light, but it's black. Very smooth. Obsidian? I'm not sure whether or not that's obsidian. It's, I mean, there's no weight to it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Some pipes. That one's attached. Yeah. Look all the lumber and the railroad ties. We're at the very top. I know my shadow is going to be in the way. Try to move a little bit. See the size of these bolts. Don't step back. Yeah. Concrete's unstable in some of these areas. Here's the remnants here. Hello, railroad ties. So between 1875 and 1906, this mill produced $1.5 million worth of silver. Oh, wow. That's pretty incredible. My goodness me, it's so windy. It is. And then again, I said it before, but it rings true. These miners had amazing views. When they weren't in the pit. Yeah. Take a look what Andrea's found. See on the right there, it's like a square nail. It's pretty neat. And then those two pieces, I believe, would have been a file. And kind of see how worn it is. It's just there's no markings left on it. Really cool. So also, as I was mentioning before, you can kind of see the different roads that used to be roads that zigzag throughout this uh, mountainside here. 
and it is apparently littered with open shafts and you know straight drops so we've had to really pick and choose our steps very wisely all right everyone that's the end of the video thank you for coming along with us to explore the rock cabin and the silver mine and you might have noticed we're in the back of Tonto we had to come back here because the wind outside is getting really bad and it's getting late so we decided that we're gonna camp here the night I think it's about 40 40 miles away from the nearest town Something like that. and the road getting here was uh, somewhat bumpy to say the least yeah not the kind of road you want to be driving at night certainly needed 4x4 four four high clearance for this trip But on that note, get out there, go and explore, put another pin in the atlas. And we will see you on our next adventure. Bye. Bye. Now, if you can see up in the distance, there's some tailing piles and this road we're on and a few others lead up there. So silver was discovered here in around 1874 by Jackson Mc... Magrinda? McCricker? All right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for coming along with us to explore the rock cabin and silver mine. And as you probably noticed, we're in the back of Tonto. We had to come in the back here because it is getting really, really windy outside. <laughs>